The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. Mology's Cooking Experience. Welcome everybody to a new episode of Mama G's Cooking Experience where today we're going to talk about winter comfort food. We're going to start off with some meatballs and then we're going to do some beef stew and then I'm going to show you my favorite type of mashed potatoes. Potatoes. But I would like to take this minute to thank Eastlink and Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for sponsoring today's episode. So let's just jump right in. So in my pan here, in my bowl here, not my pan, I have one pound of ground pork. From my ground pork, I'm going to add one egg. And as you know, crack the egg in the bowl, make sure there's nothing in there, throw your egg in there. Then I'm simple when it comes to seasoning my meatballs, I'm salt and pepper. Why? Why don't you put all this other stuff in it? Because I want the meat to speak for itself. I don't want to taste all this extra stuff. I want to taste meatballs. That's it. I'm going to put in a little bit of cracked, uh, no, uh, ground black pepper. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up one garlic clove. Now, how do we cut garlic cloves? We smash them with our knife so that they're nice and smushed. We take off our wrapper. It's like opening up a Kinder Egg. Get rid of the core, and then let's chop her up. Nice and quick, nice and small. Now, <clears throat> you can use ground garlic pepper or salt or granules, but just remember this, is that it's super concentrated and in my family, honestly, that stuff gives everybody heartburn. So I wouldn't use it, not for this. You can put it in a sauce where it has time to dissolve, but I wouldn't necessarily be putting it into my mix. So I'm putting in a clove of one garlic into here. And most people, what they're gonna use is a, um, some breadcrumbs, but I don't wanna use breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs absorb too much and, and they're chewy. They make your meatball chewy. So I like to put in a little bit of flour. Today's flour that I'm gonna use is chickpea flour. It's high in protein. It works just like regular flour. It's absorbent uh, and you don't get that uh, chewy flavor. Okay, so in my bowl, I've got salt, pepper, garlic, flour, and then that's it. But I'm gonna start preheating my pan here and I'm gonna put some pork lard in here because A, you want flavor and B, we're gonna be making the sauce at the same time where we're gonna be cooking the meatballs. So let's just get some lard in here to start melting off so that when it comes time to browning our, our meatballs, we'll be good to go. So I've got all this in here. I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to mix it up. Some people use their hands, don't get me wrong, we're going to be using our hands eventually, but if I don't have to use it right away, it's good because it gets pretty messy. The other thing, so the pro tip of using flour is you have to let it sit a little bit. You can't just be like, oh boom, here we go and just start making balls, it's too wet. It's too wet. I'm going to add another good tablespoons worth, maybe two, let's add two. Tablespoons worth, because my egg was a little bit more liquidier than what I, I anticipated. So you're looking for a feel, right? You're looking kind of like the feel of like, mm, chunky, chunky um, Play-Doh. So I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna let that sit. While that's sitting, and I have my fats here heating up. I'm going to take half an onion and do a cut. We call this in the industry a fajita cut. Nice and thin. Put 
throw it in your pan. For me, this is a good comfort food. My family enjoys meatballs. You don't always want a burger. You don't always want lots of bread. You know, it's not for everyone. I'm gonna add some of these beautiful, the Ugly Barn Farm mushrooms. I've got some oyster mushrooms here. I've got some, let me see, some shiitakes, some chestnut on, uh, mushrooms. I'm just gonna put the whole box in. I'm just gonna put the whole box in. So these awesome little ones like this, I'm just gonna nip the bottoms off. And I'm gonna throw these in whole because they're, they just look so beautiful. Okay, put these in here like this. These nice ones here, I'm just gonna give them a quick chop. Mmm, it smells so good in here. It smells so good. Nice chop, nothing too crazy. Get the bottom out, it's dry, which is fine, but Okay, some nice beautiful mushrooms. We put it on the side so that it can cook slow and low. Beauty. Okay, mix it up a little bit. You're not looking for color. You're not looking to fry this stuff so that it's like super cooked. Make space in the middle, right? then you can go to your meatballs. So now you can tell that the flour's been absorbed and that it's not so liquidy. I take two spoons. You can use a fork, you can use your hand, you can use a meatballer, which you can get at your local kitchen gadget store. So I take a spoon, I just round them off and I drop them in. So as they get dropped in, they're going to caramelize and brown on the one side. So what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to continue making my meatballs, get them into brown. And then when I come back, I'm going to show you just how to finish off the sauce. The smell in here is fantastic. But just keep them separated. It's what you want. So now that our balls have a nice crust uh, edge on them and our mushrooms are nicely wilted, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off the dish. So you can grab a liquid. I'm gonna put about a cup and a half. You can use stock. You can put a little bit of wine in here. Do not put a cup and a half of wine in here. Maybe three tablespoons. But I'm just gonna add it. It's gonna deglaze the pan. And it's gonna steam the balls. Okay, so you're gonna do that. Give it a little swirl to make sure that the meatballs are not sticking to the bottom. You're gonna add a little bit of cream. I add 35% because it's not going to break. I've got about a half a cup there. I put a lid on it. I let it steam for about 15 minutes, and then I go to serve it. Mology's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. And we're back. So what we're going to do in this part is I'm going to teach you how to make what everybody loves is beef stew. So I had a beautiful piece of prime rib here that had the bones and had the fat cap and I took them off. So why am I, what am I going to do? I'm going to take this fat and I'm going to put it in my pan and I'm going to let it melt. I don't need to add other fats into here. I don't need oil, I don't need pork fat. I'm just gonna let the fat of the fat cap work its magic here and, and we'll do that. Now, I've taken the ribs off and I've taken like my favorite part off of the end here and later on, 
I'm going to do that uh, separately when I put it into the oven so that I have a side meat to go on top. So while this is melting, I'm going to cut up my beef here, my on beautiful Ontario beef, into some nice cubes. And people are like, why are you cutting this beautiful beef? Why don't you, you know, put it on the barbecue or whatever? Hey, there's six feet of snow outside. I'm not pulling out my barbecue underneath all of that. And if you remember, you know, it's all good to eat that, but it takes you twice as long to barbecue in the winter. So it's just not worth it. And this beef is good. It doesn't matter if it's barbecued or if it's put into a, put into a stew. It's nice. I give some nice big fat cubes because you want a nice meaty bite. None of these tiny little size that are the size of uh, dice. Who wants that? You want something nice and hearty. Look at the beautiful marbling in this. You probably see my beautiful apron in which I am wearing right now. This apron was designed by a super smart young lady named M.A. And her mom, Marie's, sewed it together, and we love it. So thank you to Marie's and thank you to M.A. for this beautiful apron. Just going to give this stuff a nice quick cut. Remember, Gates' pro tip, always put a cloth underneath your cutting board for security. Now, the other thing is, is most people, generally speaking, will put potatoes in their stew. I don't put potatoes in my stew, but Mama G, why don't you put potatoes in your stew? Because I serve my stew with mashed potatoes, which gives me a nicer feel, a nicer product, and it's not so... The starch leaches out of the potatoes, it goes into the sauce. It's just a hassle. I don't like it. it sometimes you want your meat to be a little bit um, more cooked, but you can't because your potatoes are just going to melt, like, cook too much, and then they fall apart. It's not worth it. So I'm just melting off this fat. Oh, it's so nice. So that's there. I'm nice and easy here. I've got some carrots, which I'm just going to cut up. And you're just going to say, but Mama G, shouldn't you be changing your cutting board? You're doing meat and vegetables on the same cutting board. It's all going into the same pot. Now, if I was taking this and making it into a salad, then for sure I'd be cutting, changing my cutting board be changing my knife, be doing a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, we got that happening here. Ooh, that sizzle sounds so good. So I'm onions and carrots. They're both hearty, they're both flavorful. You want the carrots for the sweetness, the onions for flavor, the garlic we're gonna cut just in half, nothing crazy, you know. Nice and easy here. Now, but why the tomato? You want a little bit of acid in your stew to help break down the fibers of the meat. It also adds a little color to your stock. Add some flavor. There we go. Mm, smells so good in here. Okay, there we go. We've got some fat rendering down at the bottom there. Now, do I have enough fat in there? Yeah, I got enough fat in there. Let me put these little fat things onto here. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to drop in my meat so it can give a nice sear. You can hear it. Now some people would like to put some flour on the outside of the meat to create a gravy-ish uh, type of sauce. But I believe in the power of reduction. So little bit of coarse salt. 
Don't go crazy on your spicing. A little bit of black pepper. Always parsley. We're gonna put in some thyme. Mmm, smells so good. There we go. And I'm gonna put in a fresh, full sprig of rosemary, but not yet, not yet. But that's gonna go in there. Okay, we're gonna brown up the outside. I'm going to add my carrots, garlic, and onions. Now, I'm not putting in my tomato until my liquid is in. Because I don't want it to break apart. The juice ain't worth the squeeze. There we go. So... This is ready for this. This is there. I'm going to give this a good stir. My family used to eat this. This would be like a Sunday night dinner option. It was always, it was always good. So we're going to use a little bit of red wine for deglazing of the pan. Probably like a cup. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. We'll add in about one liter's worth of water. Don't top it up to the top. Put in my sprig. And then I'm gonna slice my tomato. It's nice and ripe. Oh, it's so nice. Nice Ontario. Well, this one here is an Ontario greenhouse tomato. But I'm telling you guys, Pay attention to where your products come from. Makes a big difference. Okay, here we go. Just like that, not too crazy, beautiful. So, let's go back to our fat pieces here. And I'm just gonna lay them on top. But why, Mama G, what are you doing? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna melt the fat, the rest of the fat, and get that beautiful beef flavor into the sauce. So here we go. This I seared the meat off at high. I'm gonna turn it down to medium low. And from there, I'm gonna let it simmer for about 45 minutes. And we'll come back to it when it's all finished. Mama's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria. 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Welcome back. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you or tell you how I like to make mashed potatoes at my house. Most people at their houses grab a big old bag of Don Poulet mashed potato, potatoes, cut them up, you know, and, and mash them up and all that stuff. Not me. Not me. I'm a root vegetable type of mashed potato scenario. So in my root vegetable scenario here, I like parsnips, I like carrots, and I'm gonna use one fresh sweet potato to add for our starch. But Gates, why would you do that? First of all, I like my stuff a little bit sweeter, right? Um, the regular potatoes, you gotta add so much salt and so much seasoning. You might as well just sit there and eat butter and cream. It's delicious together though. So we're just gonna do a quick chop. I've got carrots, I've got some parsnips, and also in the middle of winter, these vegetables, the colors are, have extra nutrients in there for you. You know, oh, pro tip, make sure that you cut everything kind of the same size so that it boils down to the same size. So it's all mushy at the same time. So the other thing that I like to do is I like to season my water. 
I like to put a little bit of herbs, dry herbs in there. And I put my um, salt and pepper in with my water so that the salt is completely absorbed into the starch of the root vegetables. And I don't have to put so much at the end. So I'm just gonna plop this all in here. As you know, I'm gonna put in a little bit of dry thyme. Oh, these silly containers, eh? Probably about mm, half a teaspoon in there. I'm gonna put in some salt. Try to use a nice kosher salt, nice fat salt. And I'm gonna put in, but we're gonna leave the white pepper for the end. I'm gonna put that in there. You're gonna cover it, I think my pot's a little small. That's okay. I'm gonna cover it with water. Yep, perfect, turn it on. Medium high. You're gonna get it to a nice boil and then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that your fork goes through them all everywhere. So I'm going to cover that with water, move my stuff around so that it all, see, if you move it around with the water, it does the displacement, but you're able to get it all covered. Turn it on, put a lid, and just let itself steam itself to there. Now that our stew is finished and our meatballs are nice and cooked, our potatoes our root vegetables are ready to be mashed. So I've taken the liberty of taking the water out of here. I just drained it, nothing crazy. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of butter because if you're gonna do it, do it. Gonna add about two, three, three and a half tablespoons of 35% cream. A little smidge of salt. Don't go crazy because you already salted your water. And then we're gonna do a little bit of white pepper. But Gates, why am I using white pepper? You're using white pepper so that you don't leave flecks into your, your stuff, but white pepper gives a nice finished flavor to your potatoes and it looks nice and it smells, the aromatics are huge. And the last secret ingredient is freshly ground nutmeg. So just take a nutmeg seed, put it onto your micro zester, give it about 12, 10, 12 little uh, pulls on there. The nutmeg is what really finishes the product. Grab your masher, give it a nice mash. The, the parsnips mash nice with the carrots and the potatoes. And it's okay if you wanna leave it a little bit chunky. Some people, I prefer it that way. I don't like eating a mush. If I wanted a mush, I'd put it into the mixer. It gives a nice color. I, if you could smell this, honestly, if you could smell this, it'd be so good. And I'm not saying don't use regular mashed potatoes, of course. Use what you want, but this is a nice alternative. And if you're trying to get your kids to eat potatoes or root vegetables, this is the way to do it. My kid likes it this way. Okay, so I've got a nice chunky mash here. Like I said, I don't like mine too thick too thin, nice, rustic-y. The thyme that was in the pot is still in the pot. Yeah, look at that beauty, look at that beauty. So, I've got my two nice plates here. Let me give a nice scoop on both. Nice and chunky. Nice and chunky on this one here. Perfect, look at how nice that looks. Now I would like to take the time to say thank you to everybody. Thank you to Eastlink Community TV. Thank you to Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for helping to support the Mama G's cooking experience. Hopefully we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.